I'm Clint, and we look at various ways to create and use selections in Photoshop, in this episode of Swatches. Now I've received several requests to cover the topic of selections and how I use them in painting. Uh, the questions were actually pretty general, so I'm going to give a fairly general response. Let me just show you what Photoshop has and how I've used them and give you examples of uh, how to use them possibly in your own artwork. Okay, so let's just start by looking at the selection options you have in your toolbar here. Now you've got three main ones here at the top. Now your toolbar might look different. It might have two items side by side. If you want to change that, all you have to do is double tap on this gray bar at the top. Don't click on one of the icons, uh, the two little images here. Just double tap that, and it'll make them side by side. You can just choose to do whichever way you want. It just lines up the characters a little different. Okay, so let's start with the, uh, the top left in this case. These are your marquee tools. You have a square, my square is showing. If you hold down on this square, you're given the other options. Now, for digital painting, I like never use the single row, single column. Maybe some other guys do. If you want to know more about it, check them out. But right now, let's look at the uh, rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool. Now, the rectangular, it's going to give you just that. You click and hold down somewhere on your canvas. Now, I clicked in initially at that top corner, and I'm dragging it down while holding it down and it's going to give me that selection. Once I release the button, I'm using a stylus pad, so once I take my pen off the stylus pad, and it's going to confirm that selection. You will know that it's selected due to this little checker design that floats around the outside, also affectionately called the marching ants. And you can hide that if you would like to by hitting Command H or Control H for uh, Windows users. Now it is still selected, but all I did was hide the edges of the selection. If you want to see it again, just do the uh, shortcut again, hide selection. You can, of course, coming up to View and Show Selection Edges, and you can uh, check or uncheck that if you want to see that visible, or you can use a shortcut. Now this will give you like you see here, a rectangle. Now, if you want a perfect square, all you have to do is click, start dragging out a little bit, then hold down the Shift key. The Shift key will lock this into a perfect square. Ta-da! Perfect square. That's the best way to get one. Now, if I want to add on to this selection, if I want to say I want to add a bit more down here, I hold down the Shift key before I click, if I hold down the shift key after I click, it'll give me a square. If I hold it down before I click, it'll change my icon to having the little plus sign by it, which means I will be adding my new shape to the existing shape. Now the same thing holds true if I switch over to the elliptical marquee tool. It is going to give me an ellipse. I can make my lips go up, down, or side to side. It'll always be a 90 degree, up or down. You can't get angles unless you rotate it afterwards. Again, uh, like getting the perfect square with the square uh, rectangle tool, you can use the shift key to get a perfect circle if I wanted to do that. Also, you can add those other shapes onto it by holding down the shift key. Now, I can add squares onto it also, you can mix and match and add or take away any selection tool with any other selection tool. Okay, now to take away from this, say that I want to take out a piece from the middle, you would want to use the Alt tool. Alt is a subtraction and Shift is an addition. So I want to take away some selection from this area, hold down the Shift key, I mean, sorry, hold down the Alt key and I'll make my selection. Remember, you, in order to take it away or to add it, you need to hold down either the Alt or the Shift before you make your click. 
Okay, in order to deselect, you can either say select, deselect, or you can use a shortcut on a Mac is Command D. And it's gone. It's not hidden, it's gone. It's unselected. Now, if you want to get that selection back that you just had, and you want it exactly the way it was, you can go up to select and say reselect or shift command D and you'll get that back. But that only applies to your very last selection. However, you can save selections. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, you can say select, save selection right here at the bottom. And it will say, I'm going to save this selection to this document in a new channel. And what do you want to call this? I'll call this uh, random one. You can name it whatever you want and just say OK. OK, let's say that we now deselect that. We have nothing selected. And I want to get that selection back. I'll go to select. Now we have the option to load selection. There was previously no selection saved, so there was nothing that we could have loaded. Now we can load something. Say load selection, and we'll have our list. Now, there's just one item here because we've only saved one item. But you can make multiple selections and save them, and they will all be added down this list, and you can choose which one you want. We'll just select that one back, say OK, ta-da, we have our selection back. OK. Now let's look at some of the other tools. This one's really great. This is the lasso tool. Basically, any shape that you can draw is going to give you that shape. Now it does have a little intelligence to it in that if I do not connect those ends, it will connect them with a straight line wherever I pick it up at. So I picked it up right here and it said, okay, well, let's go ahead and finish the shape by creating a straight line between the two points, the last point and the first point. Now, you can get some goofy shapes if you do this, and then you let go. Well, it's going to send a line straight down this, and it's going to give you the offset on both sides all the way down. So careful about letting up before you've got the right shape. Otherwise, you can end up with something goofy like this. Now, just like the other ones I said, you can add and subtract with any tool. I can use the marquee tool and add to the lasso tool. It doesn't care which tool you're using. A selection is a selection. Now, under the lasso tool, there's two other ones, the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. Now, as far as digital painting, I practically only use the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool. I very rarely use the magnetic lasso tool just because I can't get it to work as intelligently as it tries to work. Now, the polygonal lasso tool is different, let's deselect that, than the normal lasso tool because it only works in straight lines. So you tap each point that you want to be a corner. There we go. So you have your shape. This is really great for any kind of man-made objects, like you're doing a building, you're doing a vehicle, you're doing maybe even planes uh, on an armor, you're doing whatever needs a nice sharp edge to it. Nothing organic. Uh, lasso tool is great for organic things. Now the last one to round it out is the magic wand tool. Here it looks like a little magic wand with a sparkle on the end of it. So let's click that. Now there is another tool underneath it, the quick selection tool. Uh, again, I find it is a bit like the magnetic lasso tool. It tries to have an intelligence behind it to guess what you're trying to do and select that area, but I've yet to find it to be as good as it tries to be. So I almost never use it. Concentrate on using the magic wand tool. Now the magic wand tool is going to tr look at the color that you click on and it is going to try to select all the colors near that color. Okay, now we have some settings with this one. Now these don't have that many settings. The marquee tools, you can feather it a little bit and we can talk about that in a minute. And we can talk about some of these other things and refine the edges and such. But the lasso, uh, the magic wand tool does have some settings we need to look at. 
First is, okay, anti-alias, you pretty much always want that checked. Uh, what is anti-alias? Okay, let's look at, let's uh, wipe this scene real quick and make a circle and fill that circle. And we're gonna zoom in here. We're gonna zoom in a long way. And you can see that even this perfect circle that is a nice crisp line edge does not in fact have just black and white. In order to give the appearance of a smooth edge, it incorporated multiple gray tones in order to bridge the, the, the contrast between black and white. This little pixel fading is called anti-aliasing. These are aliases, okay? So it's anti-aliasing to do that. I would suggest to have that on. It gives a smoother appearance. Otherwise, it actually ends up looking a bit jagged if you don't have it on. So let's go back to our normal scene. As this was just a, a random guy I, I painted for a, a token I printed up. Okay. So, we have Magic Wand, Alias is turned on. Now, Tolerance and t Contiguous are some things you want to pay attention to. Tolerance is just that. It's how tolerant or how far from the color that you clicked is it allowed to branch out. Now, if this is tolerant to one, that means it is only going to select that exact uh, RGB color. If it's one one different on the RGB scale, it's not going to select it. So, how far is the range? How broad is the range? That's what the tolerance tells you. If I set this up to 40, it's going to grab a much larger area. It's going to say, okay, this one is up to 40 numbers different than this one. And I can hold down the shift key and it's going to keep getting bigger. Now you see, once I click this spot, there's a lot of things within 40 of that. Even things that visually I would think would not be included are in fact next to it, up to a 40 tolerance. So you wanna play around with this tolerance in order to give you the right amount. And this totally depends on what your scene is and what you're trying to do. So 20 is nice. 20 is nice because it gives an accurate uh, visual distinction between the head and the background, so I can keep using that. Okay, so that's your tolerance. Contiguous is whether this is a continuous selection or not. Now, contiguous means that it's only if the colors touch each other. If I take that off and say I selected this gray, it is going to select anything within a 20 tolerance or range of the color that I selected that exists anywhere on the whole canvas. If I click black, it is gonna select everything that's black or near black on the whole image. If I select that same black and contiguous is selected, it is only gonna grab the black that touches this black that I clicked. Okay, so that is the tools that you would most likely use in digital painting that exist here on your toolbar. But there are other tools that you can use. Let's at looking at using select color range. Now this one works a little like the magic wand tool. So let's go ahead and open that up and see what we get. It brings up this little menu. It gives you a scene of the image in black and white. Now the things that are white are things that will be selected. Now you can have a, your little eyedropper tool here. It will default to the eyedropper tool when you get to the color range. And it's asking you to sample a color from the image. So let's say that I sample the black. Now it is saying I am selecting anything that is black or near black. Now how near black is determined by what is called fuzziness. This fuzziness, I'm not sure why they call it fuzziness, because essentially it is the same tolerance level that you have from your other tools. So consider it your tolerance, consider it um, your range, 
So if I set this tolerance or fuzziness way down, it's going to select things that are only very near the color that I selected. If I select this greeny gold color and the tolerance or the fuzziness is low, it's only going to select it in that area. I can move it up and I can watch which areas it's going to grab. So say I want to adjust the color of this kind of uh, peachy tone behind his head. I can select that. I can turn it down so it mainly just selects that color in the background. Now you can additionally add or subtract colors from this selected area by using the plus or the minus, or you can hold down the shift or alt key over here without actually clicking on the buttons. So I want to add, there's this tone right here that's not picking up. So I want to add that by holding down the shift key and then clicking that spot and just want to add that in. And I want to add a bit more of the background colors here, but I want to take the face out. So I want to hold down the shift key and sample colors from the head until I find some sort of balance here. There we go. That's nice. And mainly background and just a little bit of the face. Okay. So I'll we'll OK that and it will show me that selection. I can then hide that selection with a Control H or Command H, bring up Hue Saturation. Now you can see I only have that area selected and I can modify that area. Now which tool you need depends on what you want to do. There is none of these that are king over the other ones. They all have their own little pros and cons. Okay, now if you have a selection like this, let's hide, uh, show the selection back. You can modify the edges of your selections in various ways. Go to Select, Modify. You can smooth your edge. So right here, the edges are very jagged. There's lots of little jaggy stuff going on. Let's zoom in here and we can take a look at it a bit better. Okay, so let's say Modify Smooth. It is going to average out the shape of your selection and give you a bit smoother shape, depending on how many pixels of tolerance it's allowed to smooth out. Uh, for visual change, let's say 15, that's fairly broad. And all of a sudden, there you go, you can see the difference there. It goes from this crazy sort of uh, sharp edges to being this nice flowing shapes. That also means that I fuzzed into areas that I probably don't want changed. So you want to do that sometimes. Usually if you want to do it in digital painting, you just want to do maybe two to four pixels. It's enough just to soften it and give that sort of alias edge without looking like it's pulling into other areas that you don't want. Now let's example some of the other things that you can do with the modify selections by creating a ring using the elliptical marquee tool. So I have that selected. I'm going to shift, pull out, make a circle on a new layer, and I'm going to fill that with this uh, bluish color. Now I'm going to hit select, modify, and contract that. It will make this selection shape smaller by 20 pixels in all directions because I have 20 selected. I'm going to say OK. And you can see that it has moved the edge in. It's 20 pixels smaller all the way around. Now, I can then delete that. And all of a sudden, I just have the outside edge. That's a great way to make rings. OK, that was something else I forgot to mention. If you have something selected and you want to deselect it, all you need to do is either hit uh, deselect or you can tap one time without dragging somewhere outside of your selection area. There it's deselected. You can see that in your history tool. Now if you want to move your selection you can have make a selection and then click and drag inside the selection and you can move your selection around. Okay. Now there are some other ways to make selections and one of those is the quick mask tool. Let's go ahead and get rid of this layer. We don't need him anymore. Now the quick mask exists down here on the toolbar. This is the little symbol right here. I can click this and now I am in quick mask mode. Enter quick mask. Now that is the only thing that appears to have changed. But in fact we're in a slightly different mode. 
anything that I paint is going to be a selection now. So say that I write my name, for instance. Now, anything that you paint while in the quick mask mode is going to come up as red because you're not actually painting color. You're painting a selection. And when you tap this again to exit the quick mask mode, it is going to mask everything other than what I drew. Okay, now, say that you want the name itself and you don't want everything around it. You can just say select inverse or shift command I. Ta-da! Now that of course will work with any selection that you have selected at any time. If you want to inverse the selection, you can just do that. So now I can fill that if I wanted to. I can modify that. Uh, say that I want to undo that. And I want to hide the selection, open hue saturation. I can then super saturate just anything inside of my name or any shape that you want to use. Now, another good way to use the quick mask mode, let me deselect what I have there. Let's go back into quick mask mode and use the gradient. Ah, now this is something that can come up fairly often. I probably even used it on this image on the bottom, uh, but let's use it at the top and see what happens. I have the standard gradient, you know, just black to nothing, or you can use black to white. It will only recognize black. It won't recognize white as being part of your painting. So let's select the black and it's uh, set it up to normal 100% and I'm going to click and drag from the top down. Say that I want to, the top of it to be darker. There I painted the top and it fades to nothing. Exit quick mask. Now I want to reverse this because right now this is the area selected and not that. So I want to inverse that selection. Let's hide that real quick so those aren't bothering us as we look at our changes. Go back to hue saturation. Now I can darken just that area. All right. Now this is a great way to have smooth faded edges to your selections because you don't always want a really hard edge to your selection. You want a soft, subtle edge. You can use gradients. That's one way to do it. Or you can go back to quick mask mode and just use a brush that has very soft edges to it. And you can have selections that only work at the opacity that you painted the selection at to begin with. So inverse that. And now I can lighten or darken according to how strong it was that I painted that area. Now, this, um, now the quick mask mode also works in conjunction with the other tools. So let's say that I selected this area around his head and then I enter the quick mask mode. Because earlier I had nothing selected before I entered, but if you have something selected, then you enter, this is what you get. It says, okay, you've essentially already painted the area by using your other tool. Now you can modify this. I can erase this out if I want to get rid of some of that, or I can use it and just paint into it like I would if I was doing it to start with. So you can push and pull with these in order to get hard shapes, soft shapes, you can use big shapes, small shapes, so much control using the quick mask mode in conjunction with paint brushes, in conjunction with marquees, lasso tools, and even the magic wand tool. No, you can accidentally, and I've done this on numerous occasions, accidentally hit the, uh, the Q key. The Q key will enter you into the quick mask mode. And if you're painting along and saying, why the heck is this only painting red? I don't even have red selected. It's because you accidentally hit the quick mask mode and you need to tap it again to get back out of it. Now, something else that you can do is create a selection layer. Uh, that's what I call it. So, say that I, uh, I just want to paint this guy's head. Alright, I'm going to set this down a little bit so I can see the... 
I'm going to do this really rough. If I was doing this for real in a painting, I'd take more time and get the edges better. So instead of saving the selection like I showed you earlier, what you can do is create a shape. Now this is something I think I've covered in a previous video, but as it's dealing with selections, I'll go over it again. So I've made a separate layer in the shape of this guy's head. And then I can hide that layer. It's just not visible. It's still there. All I need to do is hit Command and then click the icon. Don't click the name of the layer. Just click the icon of the layer, the thumbnail, and it will select anything in that layer. So voila, I immediately have my selection. I don't have to say select, load selection, pull up the menu, click it, and then say OK. All I need to do is I'm still in my paint area. I just command click. Voila, I have my selection. Very convenient. Um, and then, of course, you can modify that if you need to. Okay, one other thing that you can do is if you have a layer mask. Okay, let's say we make a copy of this guy. Okay, we're going to make a duplicate of this layer, and we're going to colorize it so that everything on that layer is blue. Okay, just so that we can see a visual difference here. I can hit this one on your layers panel, this mask tool. Now this looks very similar to that because they work in very similar ways. So I click that and it gives you a second thumbnail here. Now this thumbnail is a layer mask. Anything that is white on this layer mask will be visible on that layer. Anything that is black will not show through. Okay, so I am painting essentially a window as to what can and cannot show through on that layer. Now, I am not deleting the information on that layer. I am simply allowing it. There, I turn off the background layer. Now, I can, you can clearly see what is visible and what is not visible on that layer. And that is a handy tool as to, uh, it's not really a selection because you don't have a border marching and selection, but it can work in conjunction with it. For instance, uh, now on this, uh, uh, I'll cover that in just a second, you can click on this and it gives you the option to disable it. That means I just want to turn it off for right now. You didn't delete it, it's just off. You can enable it back or you can uh, delete the layer. Let's say we'll delete that for now. Now let's select just the black ranges again. Say uh, non uh, non contiguous. Select the black areas. Hide that selection. Now, if you have something selected before you click the layer mask, it is going to use that selection to derive the shape that your selection mask should use. So now that I have this selected, now I'm going to hide it. Just hide it, I'm not deselecting it, and click the layer mask. Voila, only the black will show through. I'll turn that one off so you can see. Now, just the black of that layer shows through. Now that's pretty cool. Now of course you can uh, command I and inverse that layer. Now all of a sudden, only the black, uh, only everything other than the black will show through. So you've got some options there as to whether or not you want to select something and then create the layer mask because you it's easier to do that way. Or you can make the layer mask and then paint into it. But that is the primary ways that I use selections in Adobe Photoshop in my digital paintings. There are a couple of other ways. Like I said, uh, there's some other tools here. If you can make them work for you and they work the way that you need them to, then go for it. Hey, use what works for you. But as with Photoshop, uh, it usually is on things. There is more than one way to do something, and there's usually not one correct way to do it. Do whatever works for you with your style. Hopefully that answers your question about how to make and use selections in Photoshop with your digital painting. Now, if this video has been beneficial to you, then I would love for you to give me a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you want to keep up to date for other videos. And if there was a topic that you would like me to cover in the future, 
give me a comment below. I will take a look at those. And until I see you next time, keep drawing.